What's up, Winnicutta? It's Thursday. Thanks, Hayden. Welcome to our last show of the trimester. This year is flying by. I haven't even started to make beats in my beat laboratory yet. Um, I think you should just leave that to the pros, Hayden. In fact, Matt did a story on one of the best around, Alden Hart. Winnicutta is full of talent, especially musical talent, like the chamber singers, the band, the chorus, and even more. But it's not always about who's in front of us in music. Alden Hart has dived into music production in the process of making the beat to a song. So I got into making beats just by listening to Kid Ocean, who Pat, uh, No Limit Pat, raps on. I like, thought like, oh, it'd be fun to make beats. And I started when I went down to Vermont over summer vacation. My brother had the software Logic Pro on his computer. So I just thought like, might as well get it on mine. Sometimes it can take 20 minutes to like two hours or more. Basically, I just put in like a melody and then I just add, um, kind of like the beat, the main beat, which is like bass, uh, claps, hi-hats, and all that. I'm thinking of hitting up uh, No Limit Pat or Lord Saku to hop on one of the tracks. I'm just gonna keep making songs and maybe put them on SoundCloud or iTunes or something in the future. The first part is kind of just the melody it goes on throughout the whole song. And then I have three different bases like come in that kind of like make it like the chill like vibe that it has. After that, I kind of add little like sounds from like drum kits that are on this. And I just put them in sync with the melody. And that's kind of how I keep doing it. And then I add, um, some more stuff like bass, um, which I have like deep sub bass on here. And then I add uh, hi-hats um, with the piano roll. And I continue kind of doing that with claps, kicks, hi-hats, bass, and shakers. And that's kind of just makes up like the whole like beat that I had. Wow, what a talented kid. That is true. You know a lot of students here share talent. What's that? Balling! Tomorrow night at 6 p.m. in the gym is the 2017 Battle of the Classes basketball tournament. This is a class of 2021 fundraiser and everyone should attend to support their class. Last year, the seniors took the win. Let's see some predictions from the players about this year. Uh, I think we're going to take the dub. Seniors, no chance against us. We beat them freshman year. We're going to do it again. If seniors take the dub. We got Big Z over here. Splashing out. <laughs> I think we'll win. I think it'll be pretty close with the juniors. Dimitri Minichella, Maddie Meat. No competition. That's just bodies in the paint. Sophomores couldn't hit water if they were on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Prediction, I got us going 2-0, and beating the juniors, and then playing the freshman grade in the championship. Easy win. Last year, I pinned Matrilotti. It's probably the coolest thing ever. Uh, I think definitely we're going to win it all. We're probably going to dunk on every single person, so you better watch out. Seniors are going to take the dub for sure. Oh yeah, 218 all day. Speaking of wins, a certain junior has been killing it lately. Oh yeah, Josh Dirksen, right? Yep, he just won a really big competition. Emmy and Noah found out about it. Whoa, did you see that? I've never seen anyone skate like that before, Maya. Well, I have. His name's Josh Dirksen. The one who recently uh, won the skate competition, Maya? Yeah, we should go talk to him. Let's do it, Maya. Many people talk about the outstanding talents of football players, soccer players, and other student athletes around our school. But many people overlook the amazing skateboarding talent we have here. Josh Dirksen, a very talented skater, has competed in many competitions, including the Tim Brock's Memorial Contest, Rocky Mountain Rampage, and the Vans Amateur Combo Pool Classic in Orange, California, which he actually came in first place for his age group. 
Josh continues to exceed in school here at Winnicunit while pursuing his dream of skateboarding outside of school. I've been skateboarding since I was about eight and I turn 17 next month, so nine years now. There's a skateboard in my garage and one day me and my mom were walking by it and my mom was like, are you going to use that or should we get rid of it? Like, I'll get you a lesson. She got me a lesson and I just kind of got hooked on it. Got a better board and started skating a bunch and that's how I got into it. A lot of different contests, but uh, a few of the bigger ones I've skated in is the Vans Amateur Combi Pool Classic in Orange, California. And that was the one that I just won and I skated in that the past two years. I've skated in the Timberach Memorial Contest in San Jose. I've been to the Rocky Mountain Rampage in Colorado. Then last year, at the end of the school year, I went to Dew Tour in Long Beach, California. And before that, I've been to like Michigan for some contests. I've been to Florida. And then I go to Pennsylvania in the summer to uh, Camp Woodward quite a bit. I normally skate about six or seven days a week. I try my best to skate every day, but it's hard because you get sore pretty quick and there's the schoolwork and stuff that needs to be done. But I definitely skate most days. I've known Josh for about a year now, ever since I moved here from Florida. And he's, he's really good at what he is. He's one of the best around. He's going pro. I realized skating was more than a hobby and it was something I really wanted to pursue. When I started to like put other sports aside, like I was playing baseball and soccer when I first got into it and then I just kind of stopped wanting to go to practices because I felt like more free skating because there wasn't like a coach or a trainer like telling you how to do stuff so I could just be more creative with it. A lot of it's just like looking up to the pros because you kind of get to see them around at the skate parks, especially out west and whatnot. And some of the pros I look up to are like Pedro Barros, Alex Sergente. Around here, like Nora Vasconcelos, Nolan Monroe, and Max Jensen, who actually used to go here. So my sponsors are Pioneers Board Shop, Mini Logo Skateboards, Bones Wheels, S1 Helmets, and Rye Airfield Skate Park. And they've been super supportive and helpful along the way as well, and I'm super grateful for them. My teachers have been so supportive because they'll allow me to like do the work late as long as I do all of it in the end, and that's super helpful with traveling. But yeah, my parents have been extremely supportive in my skateboarding, and I'm super thankful for that because they're the ones who allow me and bring me on all the contests and trips and allow me to keep doing what I love. Josh Dirksen will continue to obtain more and more sponsors, and in 2018, he will begin skating in international professional contests. As a junior in high school, he's already well on his way to becoming a pro skateboarder. From WHTV, this is Emmy Deswani and Noah Karens. That's insane! I know, right? I haven't watched a movie in so long. That's a bummer, Hayden, because you just missed the New Hampshire Film Festival. Shoot darn, I have the worst luck. Oh well, Luke Witten has a story on it. Hey Winnicunit, it's Luke here in Portsmouth, home of the New Hampshire Film Festival, where today I met up with some of Winnicunit's alumni involved to find out what brought them here and why the New Hampshire Film Festival is so cool. Every year in October, the New Hampshire Film Festival takes over Portsmouth for four days, encompassing multiple venues, including the Music Hall and 3S Art Space. Once you have your pass, you gain access to tons of events and screenings of many feature films as well as documentary short films and Q&As with the creators themselves. Given its close proximity to Hampton, it's not surprising to see some of Winnicunit's alumni involved. What's up? My name is Miles C. Woodworth of Seacoast Flash. I'm here at the New Hampshire Film Festival, music hall right behind me. So I'm a Winnicunit alumni, graduated in, I want to say, 06. Warriors, Winnicunit Warriors. Are we still the Winnicunit Warriors? Yep. Okay, yeah, so we're still good there. What is the New Hampshire Film Festival? We're located in downtown Portsmouth, beautiful, right here on the seacoast. There's short films, feature films, red carpet, panels, Q and A's, just a good time. Filmmakers, photographers, moviegoers. The festival even brings in multiple celebrities, this year including Michelle McLaren, Steve Mosco, and Tom Bergeron, who premiered a pilot episode to a new TV show. So earlier today, I helped assist an interview with Tom Bergeron and the director of uh, a new TV show, a new TV pilot that they screened yesterday for the first time. So I'm here, they asked me to come and document some of the film festival. Super excited, getting some B-roll, getting some cool shots, getting some interviews, having a blast. Another one of Winnicka and its alumni had a film of their own in the festival. Uh, my name is Allison Kier, and I graduated from Winnicott High School in 1999. This year, a short film 
about uh, oysters and oyster eats was accepted into the New Hampshire Film Festival. I produced a short documentary about oyster eats and water restoration and reviving the oyster population along our coastline. I started working with the Massachusetts Oyster Project um, about four years ago. I was just volunteering and getting to know what they were doing. And once I started learning more and more about the environmental benefits the oyster eats were having, I just wanted to get you know more deeply involved and you know help in, in any way that I could in trying to get the word out because um, a lot of you know people that even live by the coastline didn't know you know these environmental benefits that oysters had, and I certainly didn't either. And I started looking at other groups along the coastline in the states that um, you know were trying to also revive the oyster population and I just wanted to bring their stories to a platform and you know try to educate the public um, and encourage them to get more involved and get their communities involved in trying to rebuild these oyster reefs. To see Allison's film and find out how you can get more involved with the oysters you can go to oysterrevival.com. So I hope that was insightful to all of you, and maybe you've even obtained enough interest to check it out next year. After a nail-biting win against Bedford, Warriors football destroyed Goffstown in order to move on and play Pinkerton in the championship game. The big game will be located in Durham at the UNH football stadium. Hope to see you all this Saturday at 6 p.m. to support the Beach Boys. I can't wait. Hard work pays off. Very true. No days off. Speaking of hard work, Jordan Fuller is only a sophomore on this Beach Boys team. I heard he's really good. Catherine and Eli did a feature on him. With all eyes on the football field following the success of the Winnicunit football team, many on the sidelines are noticing some key players. One of these players is sophomore Jordan Fuller, who is really making a name for himself here at Winnicunit. Alongside his academic achievements, he has become one of our football team's most important varsity players. His high level of performance has helped to propel the Warriors to a 9-0 start going into the playoffs, a quarterfinal win against Bedford, and a semi-final win against Goffstown. As a freshman, Fuller played on the JV team as well as dressing for varsity. With the freshman team getting off to a bad start last year, Fuller stepped in for the last few games to lead them to an unlikely championship win. Jordan says that he got an early start with the sport and started playing football in second grade. With so much time being devoted to football, Jordan says that balancing his time with his school workload and training can be challenging. I started playing in second grade with the Seacoast Raiders. I wanted to play because my dad played in college and he always talked about me playing. I've played for seven years now. This will be my eighth. Um, well, this football season, it's been pretty hard because we've had really late practices preparing for like tough opponents and for the playoffs we've extended our practices even more. I train in the spring with Billy Powers and the track team and we lift uh, all spring and then in the summer we have our own training program for the football team. Fuller is not phased by being the only sophomore and the youngest player on the varsity team due to the help of his captains and seniors. He hopes that high school does not mark the end of his playing. Uh, yeah, I plan to play in college. I can tell my dad wants me to play and uh, he played at Holy Cross so that would be cool if I was somehow able to play there. I feel like uh, being a sophomore on this team it's not as hard as uh, many would think because the captains and seniors really helped me along the way telling, giving me advice about games and how to get ready and I feel like Carter Havey one of my good friends from Northampton. He's pushed me throughout the season and uh, he is always letting me know that I can get better and uh, telling me to look at extra film and be prepared as possible for every game. Coach Ryan Francoeur says that Fuller is very committed during practices and that he has adapted well to the changes and intensity that he's encountered. He's committed to doing the little things correctly and um, he's been able to perform on a regular basis. Through working with him in the offseason, he could tell that he would be a strong offensive help to the team, but was surprised with how strong of a defensive player he was as well. In the summer, I could tell definitely that he was going to help us offensively. I just didn't know um, how much he'd be able to contribute to the defensive side of the ball this year. Um, Practice-wise, he's one of the harder practice players I've coached before. He pretty much uses all his reps, like their game reps, and tries to improve himself. 
and in the games, obviously, his performance kind of spoken for itself so far. Um, I think I've seen him just adapt to different situations he's been in. Um, when you go from freshman football to varsity football, as I've told him, the speed changes. When you go to a, from a regular season game to a playoff game, the speed changes. And um, he's adapted well to that. He's definitely grown as the season's gone on. Jordan and the team will take on the Pickerton Astros in the Division I state championship game this Saturday at UNH where they hope to obtain their 12th straight win to complete an undefeated season and take home the title. For WHTV, this is Eli and Catherine. Wow, I really hope they win Saturday. Me too. I can't wait. Well, Winnicutta, it's been an honor. Good luck on your finals. Shout out to the revenge season. Bye. Peace out. Thank you.